Paul Kennedy's monumental work, The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers, Economic Change and Military Conflict 1500-2000, presents a comprehensive exploration of the intricate interplay between economic strength and military power in shaping the destinies of nations over the course of four centuries. Kennedy's central thesis highlights the critical role of economic prowess in underpinning a nation's ability to sustain its military might, ultimately influencing its rise or decline on the global stage. Kennedy's analysis begins by examining the dynamic relationship between economic growth and military capacity during the early modern period. He argues that the initial rise of great powers, such as Spain, the Netherlands, and Britain, was intrinsically tied to their ability to amass wealth through trade, colonization, and industrialization. These economic resources, in turn, enabled them to build formidable military capabilities that secured their dominance. Kennedy's emphasis on the military revolution underscores how innovations in weaponry and tactics were funded and fueled by economic strength, illustrating the inseparable nature of economic and military forces. As the narrative progresses, Kennedy delves into the concept of imperial overstretch, wherein burgeoning great powers extend their military commitments and territorial acquisitions to the point of economic exhaustion. He presents a compelling historical pattern wherein overextension, fueled by the illusion of inexhaustible resources, contributes to the downfall of once mighty empires. The cases of Spain, overextending its reach in the 16th century, and the Soviet Union, burdened by the costs of maintaining a vast Cold War apparatus, exemplify this phenomenon. Kennedy's analysis underscores how economic strain erodes a nation's ability to sustain its military power, resulting in a cascading effect that leads to decline. Throughout the book, Kennedy employs a diverse array of case studies, ranging from the European powers to Asian giants like China and Japan. He examines how different societies grappled with the challenges of economic and military equilibrium, showcasing the complex interplay between geography, culture, and strategy. Kennedy's historical depth and global perspective lend credence to his analysis, allowing readers to grasp the universality of the economic-military dynamic across diverse contexts. One of the book's notable strengths is Kennedy's ability to elucidate complex historical concepts through accessible prose. His clear and concise writing style guides readers through intricate economic theories, military strategies, and geopolitical shifts without sacrificing nuance. Additionally, his extensive use of quantitative data, maps, and graphs buttresses his arguments, providing empirical evidence for his claims. However, some scholars have critiqued Kennedy's work for downplaying the role of ideology, political leadership, and technological innovation in shaping the fate of great powers. While he acknowledges these factors, critics argue that he tends to subsume them under the broader economic determinism. Moreover, the book's overarching framework has been criticized for its deterministic outlook, as it implies an inevitable cycle of rise and fall for all great powers. In conclusion, Paul Kennedy's The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers offers a masterful analysis of the intricate interplay between economic change and military conflict in the trajectory of nations from the 16th to the 20th century. Kennedy's central argument about the symbiotic relationship between economic strength and military power, as well as his exploration of the perils of imperial overstretch, provide a compelling lens through which to view the histories of great powers. While some critiques highlight its potential oversights, the book remains a seminal work that underscores the enduring significance of economic factors in shaping the course of global history.